As Sainz demonstrates, the 14th Amendment's Privileges and Immunities Clause remains important for some limited purposes. But, as Justice Thomas's dissent in Sainz suggests, the Due Process and Equal Protection Clauses have been employed far more extensively in contemporary case law. Although the Slaughterhouse cases suggested that Barron v. Baltimore was not vitiated by the 14th Amendment, since the early 20th century, the Court has recognized that at least some of the provisions of the Bill of Rights are incorporated into the concept of due process in Section 1, Clause 3 of the 14th Amendment and therefore are applicable against the states. As the Court stated in Twining v. New Jersey in 1908, it is possible that some of the personal rights safeguarded by the first eight amendments against national action may also be safeguarded against state action because a denial of them would be a denial of due process of law. If this is so, it is not because those rights are enumerated in the first eight amendments, but because they are of such a nature that they are included in the conception of due process. Once this principle was recognized, the question became whether all or only some of the guarantees of the Bill of Rights were incorporated against the states. The latter view of selective incorporation was articulated by Justice Cardozo in 1937 in Palco v. Connecticut. Justice Cardozo argued that only those rights that are fundamental to liberty, concern fundamental fairness, and are part of the essence of an ordered scheme of liberty are incorporated. The view of total incorporation was articulated by Justice Black's dissent in Adamson v. California in 1947, in which he argued that the history of the 14th Amendment shows it was meant to totally incorporate the guarantees of the Bill of Rights against the states. During the Warren Court era, from 1953 to 1969, the selective incorporation view prevailed, but with more of a focus on general fairness and liberty than on the specifics of any particular case. As a result, various opinions of the court have established that nearly all of the Bill of Rights are incorporated against the states. This includes, on the criminal side, all of the Bill of Rights criminal procedures guarantees, except for the grand jury indictment provision of the Fifth Amendment and possibly the excessive bail provision of the Eighth Amendment. And on the civil side, the First Amendment, including the religion, speech, assembly, and petition clauses, the Second Amendment right to bear firearms, and the Fifth Amendment takings clause. The Court has not held that the Third Amendment regarding quartering troops, the Seventh Amendment right to jury trial in civil suits at common law, or the Eighth Amendment protection against excessive fines are incorporated against the states.